Hello guys, welcome to this session. I'm going to review Raspberry Pi machines and how with Raspberry Pi machines it is possible for us to code Python programs. Today I'm going to first explain Raspberry Pi 4 Model B and then I touch a little bit of operating system on Raspberry Pi, how it works and then we go to the IDE appropriate for coding Python programs. But first, let's see what Raspberry Pi is. The picture here shows you the package that I just bought as a starter kit for Raspberry Pi for Model B. Towards the bottom right hand side of the picture, you see the board. That is a Raspberry Pi. And then the power cable case for it, the instruction guide, and also the micro SD memory card. They're all packed within this box. And I just put this one here for restoration to, for you to know what I'm talking about. So this is going to be Raspberry Pi, and Raspberry Pi is known as ultra small affordable computers. They cost less than most of video games out there, but they are very much useful in the sense that you can learn coding, you can build robots, you can create all kind of interesting things uh, and projects with Raspberry Pi machines. In fact, you can do all you expect from normal laptops or computers. Uh, like browsing, web browsing, or playing games. But in addition, Pi is known to be much more than a modern computer. You can get into the heart of a computer when it comes to Raspberry Pi machines. You can set up your own operating system. You can connect wires and circuits together, and that is possible directly with cabling to some pins on the Raspberry Pi board that you see towards the bottom right hand side of the uh, picture here in this slide. Also, it is possible for me to teach people how to program in different programming languages using Raspberry Pi machines. So it comes pre-installed with Python environment and that's why I've chosen it for the demonstration today, but all main languages, they're included within the official operating system of Raspberry Pi, and therefore uh, it's a great tool to learn and to teach. So you learn how to make games, for instance, and more importantly for my field of expertise, how to hack uh, different systems, hacking purposes or build robots if you are into robotics. All these good stuff is possible thanks to these credit card sized computers, uh, tiny machines, low cost machines, single board computers. To encourage more hands on for computing and computer science education for most of my modules, that I'm teaching within the university, I have chosen Raspberry Pi to do some hands-on experience for students. On the board, you see multiple USB ports. Shortly, I'm going to revise different ports on the board, but the main purpose of those ports is to plug in different extras, and those extras are known as peripherals in uh, computing. You also have the option to uh, use wired network port to get to the internet so Ethernet connection is provided and at the port for it on the board and as you can see model 4 is just the latest version came out so far but you can see different releases in the market since the original pre-launch model B prototype and one model after another, they brought improved specifications or new features specific to 
particular use cases. So you can see very good horizon for Raspberry Pi machines. First, let's get to know our Pi. So let's see the components of Pi. We have six main components here. So we start with the first one. It's called SOC or System and Chip. It is covered in a metal cap, as you can see. And under that cap, what we have is a silicon chip, also known as integrated circuit or IC. And this IC contains the bulk of Pi's system. This includes CPU or the brain and also GPU in addition to CPU. GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit and it's there to handle the visual side of things. Then we have the second component or RAM, random access memory, it's again another chip, small black color as you can see in this slide and plastic square. It holds what you are doing while you're working with your Pi. So if you later want to save your work, then that is going to be written down to your micro SD memory. That means we're going to have two types of memories. We're going to have volatile memories and we're going to have non-volatile memories. An example of volatile memories is RAM memory. So you don't have access to the content of RAM after you reboot your Pi. An example for non-volatile memory includes micro SD whereby you save your work and it's retrievable later. The third component of Pi is what you see on the top right. It's called a radio, and it's another example for a metal lid covering. This component, radio, uh, gives the Pi the ability to communicate with devices wirelessly. Radio acts as two main components of it. Wi-Fi radio and Bluetooth radio. With Wi-Fi radio, you're going to connect your Pi to the internet or to computer networks. And with the second component of a radio or subcomponent of radio, you're going to have Bluetooth radio, whereby you use it to connect to peripherals like microphone or nearby smart devices and sensors or smartphones. Fourth component is called the USB controller. It's another black plastic cover chip and you can see it towards the bottom edge of the board just behind middle set of USB ports and you can see it is shown with the arrow number four in the picture here. Network controller is another component, fifth component. As the name controller suggests, USB controller is responsible for running USB ports. Four USB ports on Raspberry Pi board. On the other hand, network controller, it's responsible to handle Pi's Ethernet network port. So to provide network connectivity to the Raspberry Pi board. Fifth component is even a smaller chip than a USB controller. It can be seen towards the bottom right hand side of the board itself. And the sixth component is another black chip, smaller than the rest. It's towards the top left hand side. It's just above USB type C power connector towards the upper left of the board, as I said, and it's known as PMIC, Power Management Integrated Circuit. PMIC handles the power and it turns power that comes in from micro USB port into the 
power that pi needs to run. So this turning is handled by PMIC. Next, I'm going to introduce different ports and different port types on this board, Pi's board. We start with USB. We can see four USB ports and they are there to connect USB compatible peripherals. Raspberry Pi boards, we're going to have two types of USBs. We're going to have two of USB 2's ports and two of USB 3 ports. The ones with black parts are USB 2 ports and the ones in blue color, they are faster and they are USB 3 ports. Four ports together to connect peripherals. The second type of port that we see on Raspberry Pi boards is Ethernet port or network port in other words. For a wired network using cables, for those who are aware it's called RJ45 connector on its ends, we're going to have Ethernet port that handles network connectivity for us. There are two status LEDs at bottom side of this port when you see it from close distance and those two lights, they let you know that the connection is working. The third type of port is AV and AV stands for Audio Visual Jack. They are 3.5 millimeter jacks, also known as headphone jack and if you wish to get better sound quality, then you connect that port into amplified speakers. Remember, AV, as the name audiovisual suggests, also carries a video signal which can be connected to TVs. In that case, we're going to have a composite video signal using a special cable called TRS adapter but that's beyond the scope of our discussion here, so I don't go into details for that. And the fourth type of port is CSI, Camera Serial Interface. That's a connector with a plastic flap, which can be pulled up. Camera connector or Camera Serial Interface, CSI, can use what we know as specially designed Pi camera module. So you add special camera module for Raspberry Pi machines and then that acts as webcams, let's say on your laptops or normal machines. The fifth type of ports on Pi machines are micro HDMI. HDMI stands for high definition multimedia interface and micro HDMI ports as the name multimedia suggests, it carries not only audio signals, but also video signals. So it carries both audio video signals. High definition part of the name HDMI tells you that it's going to provide excellent quality for you. And they're there to connect your Pi to one or two display devices or monitors. So the good news is you have two ports on the board, so two displays can be uh, provided. The sixth type of ports on Pi machines called USB Type-C. Uh, many smartphones these days, they use the similar port for charging. So it's something pre pretty much familiar. To most of us, USB Type C power port here on Pi machines. They connect your Pi to a power source as you expect. And as I said, it's a common sight on smartphones or many tablets or portable devices these days. The seventh type of ports towards top edge of the board, you can see that it's a connector 
that appears pretty much identical to camera connector I already introduced. It's called a display connector, number seven, and the port is also known as DSI, Display Serial Interface. They're used with Pi Touch Display, pretty much similar to a tablet or iPad. Pi Touch Display can be connected using DSI ports to uh, Pi boards. Then towards the right hand edge, uh, number eight, we have 40 metal pins. We can split those 40 pins into two rows of 20 pins. And these pins together, they are called GPIO or General Purpose Input Output Header. GPIO is a feature of Pi that enables you to talk to additional hardware and Additional hardware can be LEDs, for instance, can be buttons, can be sensors, different sensors, can be uh, pulse rate monitors, etc. etc. The ninth type of ports and Pi boards are smaller header with four pins compared to uh, GPIO, and they are there to connect power over Ethernet hat for you. So PoE or power over Ethernet, it's an optional add-on that lets you or your Pi receive power from network rather than USB Type-C ports. So your network connection can also provide power for you and this technology is known as power over Ethernet, PoE. And to use that, we use these four pins shown by number nine in the figure here. The tenth type of ports and pies are what we know as micro SD card connector. So I already mentioned non volatile memory types and opposite side of board to display connector, you see a card connector and the card itself contains the files you save, the software you install and the operating system that makes your Pi run. So these 10 together are different types of ports available on your board. What you need in addition uh, for Pi 4 Model B is first of all USB power supply, a 5 volt power supply, 3 amperes, and as mentioned before, that USB Type-C connector can be found extensively today because many smartphones, they use the same charger. Then along with your micro SD card, you need what we know at NUBS. And what NUBS is, you see that in the next slide, so don't worry. And then a keyboard and a mouse are required and they need to have USB connector and also you need micro HDMI cable to carry sound and image from your Pi to the display or monitor. Also for safety remember when you start working with the board don't work with a bare board and place it on metal surface because that could conduct electricity and can cause a short circuit. In this slide, I'm going to talk briefly about assembly of your Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Let's see the first step for assembling the case. Towards the bottom left hand side, take the red base and hold it in a way that the raised end is to your left and lower end to your right hand side. Holding the Pi with no micro SD card inside it, but by its USB and Ethernet ports, it's holdable. A slot its connectors, I mean USB Type C and also to micro HDMI and 3.5 AV 
jack into the holes that you can see in the slide towards bottom left hand side figure in the side of the base and gently lower the other side down to sit flat then you take the white lead and place the two clips at the left into the matching holes on the left of the base just above the micro card slot when they're in place push the right hand side above the usb ports down until you hear a click to install the micro card which is the pi's storage just turn the pi over and slide the card into the micro SD slot with the label facing away from the Pi itself. Remember, it can only go in one way and should slide home without too much pressure. And if you want to remove it again, just simply grip the end of the card and just pull it gently out, and that's it. The USB connectors for keyboard and mouse should slide home without any pressure. So that's the next stage for the assembly. Uh, so you don't need to force the connector in, remember. If you have to, then there is something wrong there. And then in the next step, you're going to take your micro HDMI cable and, and connect the smaller end to the micro HDMI port closest to the USB Type-C port on your Pi and the other end, of course, to your display. One point here, you may need adapter cables. They're available in the market, which allow you to convert the micro HDMI port on Pi to VGA, for instance, or DVI-D or DisplayPort for use with older computer monitors. If that's the case with you, then these are simply connected to your Pi micro HDMI port. Then a suitable cable used to connect the adapter cable to the monitor. Next stage is to connect a network cable into the Ethernet port on your Pi. It's optional because instead of this stage, you can go with wireless. And the last stage here is for your Pi. If it doesn't have a power switch, that is the case with most Pis. They don't have a power switch. Remember that they will turn on as soon as they are connected to a live power supply. So as soon as you connect them uh, to the power supply, then they are on. So far we have seen the hardware side of the story. Now let's see how we can set up the software side. Raspberry Pi is able to run a wide range of software and this includes operating systems. The core software that makes a computer or a Raspberry Pi machine run. The most popular of these operating systems is in fact the official operating system of Raspberry Pi Foundation called Raspbian. And Raspbian is based on Debian Linux. So Raspbian is tailor-made for Raspberry Pi and comes with a range of extras pre-installed and ready to go. But to learn how to uh, do basic stuff with Raspberry Pi and its operating system Raspbian. Don't worry if you are familiar with Microsoft Windows or Apple Macintosh operating systems. Then you have seen pretty much what we know as Windows icons, menus, and pointer WIMP principles. Raspbian is based on the same WIMP principles, Windows icons, menus, and pointers. And as a result, should quickly feel familiar. 
Before you can begin using Raspberry Pi, you need to set up the software or operating system and the software which controls what the Pi can do uh, is called operating system. However, for installing operating system, you need another software first called Noobs, N-O-O-B-S, as you can see on the top right hand side of the slide. Noobs stand for a new out of box software and is designed to make installing the operating system as easy as possible allowing you to choose from several different operating systems available and install them automatically but still you can do all these in little more than a few clicks of the mouse and that's it new out of the box a software noobs the full name and the short name is a unique installation image and with noobs preloaded or by you loaded on your micro SD card you can install a wonderful range of operating systems for your Pi machine when the Pi later first switched on or what we know as booted with a fresh installation of noobs on its micro SD card you see screen with Pi logo on it and a small progress window at the upper left after a short pause which can take up to a minute the first time you use the noobs micro SD card you see noobs menu and this noobs menu is what you can see in the figure in this slide a system which lets you choose the operating system to run on your Pi two options here two operating systems are included with noobs as standard and my micro sd card first of all it's raspbian as i said before a version of the debian linux operating system tailored specifically for the raspberry pi and the second operating system is librialec and that is a version of the Kodi Entertainment Center software distribution. For our focus here, we go with Raspbian if the Pi is connected to the network. However, then you have the option to go with other operating systems too. So if Pi connected to network either through a wired connection or using Wi-Fi networks option from the top bar of the icons, uh, you can download and install other operating systems. To begin installing the operating system, just use your mouse to put a cross in the box to the left of Raspbian full uh, option, the one that is highlighted in blue, it's selected already in the figure here, and point the cursor at the white box and just click once, and that's it. When you've done so, you'll see the install menu icon is no longer grayed out and that means you can now install your operating system it's ready to be installed the installation process remember may take anything from 10 to 30 minutes depending on speed of your micro sd card as the operating system is installed there is a progress bar there and you can watch the progress of installation when the installation has finished window will pop up with an ok button click and the pi will restart into its freshly installed operating system as it is restarted you see a lot of text scrolling up the screen this is ok acceptable known as boot messages and the first time you boot into Raspbian, it can take a minute or two as it adjusts itself to make the best use of the free space on your micro SD card. But next time when you boot, things will go more smoothly. Then what you see is a welcome wizard. And the first time you run Raspbian, you'll see the welcome wizard anyway. This helpful tool 
We'll walk you through changing some settings in Raspbian known as the configurations. So these settings, we call them configuration. And that is to do with how and where you will be using the Pi. So, but you can change it later, don't worry. The next screen will ask you to change the password. By default, your username is Pi and the default password for Pi user is Raspberry but you will be asked to change that in the next stage and then you have a built-in wireless helps you choose a Wi-Fi assuming that your wireless network is secure you will, you will be asked for its password and the password for those of you who are familiar is called pre-shared KPSK normally written on a card with the router or at the bottom of the router itself just enter the password and get connected to your wireless and then the next screen will allow you to check for and install updates for Raspbian or any other stuff on the Raspberry Pi after you're connected to the internet Raspbian can regularly get updated to fix bugs add new features or improve performance when you have made some changes, certain changes, they only take effect when you restart your Raspberry Pi machine. And this process is known as a rebooting. If prompted to do so, then click the reboot button and the Raspberry Pi will restart. As you expect this time, you won't see the welcome wizard. Its job is done and and now your Pi is ready to use. Now we want to see Raspbian in reality. The version of Raspbian installed on most Raspberry Pi boards is probably known as Raspbian with the Raspberry Pi desktop. And that is to refer to its main GUI graphical user interface what you can see towards the bottom of this slide let's see how we can navigate to different parts of this Raspberry Pi desktop or Raspbian with the Raspberry Pi desktop navigating desktop let's start with A A the nice view that you can see is the wallpaper and B is the taskbar. So at the top of the taskbar is what you can see. B allows you to actually load each of the programs of Raspberry Pi and Raspberry operating system to be able to see them after they're loaded. You go to B. Uh, these are then indicated by tasks, what we know as tasks. And um, one example of the tasks you can see that I have loaded the browser. We see that later it's called Chromium Web Browser. And that is shown by a task C on my uh, taskbar B. Then D is a system tray towards top right hand side. You can see system tray. D itself. It consists of EFGHI, so media eject, Bluetooth icon, network icon, volume icon, and clock icon. With media eject, you can see towards the right hand side of the menu bar, it houses the system tray D, and part of that is. E media eject if you have any removable storage USB memory sticks for instance connected to Pi then you see eject symbol is on and clicking on it will allow you to safely eject and remove them then we have on the far right hand side I or clock uh, the clock icon Click on it and it brings up Digital Calendar 2. Then F shows the Bluetooth icon and G 
shows the network icon and hatch shows the volume icon so next to speaker icon if you click left on hatch for volume icon then you can adjust the pi's audio volume however if you click right then you can choose which output the pi board should use for audio next uh, g network icon if you're connected to wireless it shows you the signal strength and that is displayed as a series of bars it's not the case here with this illustration if you're connected to a wired network however you'll just see two arrows as you can see in the figure here clicking on the network icon will bring up a list of nearby wireless networks while clicking on Bluetooth icon F next to that will allow you to connect to a nearby Bluetooth device. Then we have clock, as I said, and then towards top left hand side, you can see launcher. What launcher is, we see that now we have J launcher, we have K for menu. Uh, when you click on a Raspberry icon, uh, the left hand side of the menu bar is home to a launcher or J and launcher is in fact where you will find the programs installed alongside Raspbian operating system. Some of these programs are visible as shortcut icons, others are hidden away in the menu and you need to click on the Raspberry icon in order to be able to see them uh, as soon as you click on raspberry pi uh, icon k to the far left then that brings up those hidden installed programs on raspberry then we have l for waste basket icon and m for removable drive icon nopq should be very much familiar for you it's what we see with other operating systems as well we've got the window title ball and then minimize maximize and close i would like you also to know about a few applications of Raspberry operating system a few programs so the chromium web browser the one that is opened here in this illustration too it's the to get to that, you just click on the Raspberry icon towards the top left to bring up the menu and then move your mouse pointer to select internet category. And then from there, you click on Chromium web browser and that is loaded. To open a new tab should be easy for you. You have seen that with other operating systems too. So instead of having multiple websites open without having to juggle multiple uh, browser windows we either click on the tab button the plus icon or hold down control plus t and that opens up a new tab then the third program i would like you to check is the file manager and file manager includes files you save whether there are programs or anything you, you have written or any videos, images, they all go into your home directory. And for you to be able to see those files that you have saved, you use File Manager. So to see home directory, just click on Raspberry Pi icon, and that brings up the menu and then move to select accessories and then click on file manager to load the program and file manager program lets you browse files folders and these files and folders are known as directories on a raspberry pi micro sd card as well as those files and folders that are there aren't any removable storage devices like USB flash 
drives. You connect to the Raspberry Pi's USB ports. When you first open it, it automatically goes to your home directory. This is important. In home directory, you will find a series of other folders, and those other folders are known as subdirectories. And subdirectories, very much similar to menu, you have a range in categories. The main categories for subdirectories are desktop, documents, downloads, magpie, music, pictures, public, videos. Let's see what they are. Desktop, this folder of subdirectory is what you see when you first load your Raspbian. If you save a file here, it will appear on Raspbian desktop, making it easy for you to locate it and to load it. Then you've got documents uh, subdirectory, and that's going to be home to most files you create. Downloads, as the name suggests, when you download a file from the internet using the Chromium web browser, it will be automatically saved here. Magpie, this subdirectory of this folder contains an electronic copy of the Magpie, and Magpie is the official magazine of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Music and pictures, as the name suggests, any music you create or put on Pi can be stored on the music subdirectory. Pictures, specifically for pictures or image files. Videos, a folder for videos. And the first place most video playing programs will look at is videos subdirectory. And then we've got public subdirectory or folder. Uh, while most of your files are private, anything you put in public subdirectory or public folder will be available to other users of your Pi machine. So even if they have their own username and password, not yours, they will be able to access the content of public because the, as the name suggests, it is public. Then the fourth element of Raspbian operating system I want to investigate here is LibreOffice Productivity Suite. LibreOffice, if you experiment it, it gives you another taste of what Pi can do. Just click on Raspberry Pi menu icon, click on Office, and click on LibreOffice Writer. This loads the word processor portion of LibreOffice, but LibreOffice, as I said, is a popular productivity suite. If you're confused by what productivity suite means, well, you're all aware of it. If you've used Microsoft Office, if you have used Google Docs, then you know what productivity suite means. LibreOffice has components and we want to see what these components are. First component is LibreOffice Base. As the name Base suggests, it's a database, a tool for storing information and looking it up quickly and analyzing it. LibreOffice Base. Second component is LibreOffice Calc for calculation. A spreadsheet, as you would expect, a tool for handling numbers and creating charts and graphs. Then we've got LibreOffice Draw, an illustration program, and a tool for creating pictures and diagrams. Then you've got LibreOffice Impress, to impress your audience, a presentation program for creating slides and running slideshows. Then you've got LibreOffice Maths, a formula editor, a tool for creating properly formatted mathematical formula, uh, which can then be used in other documents. Next on the Raspberry and operating system components, I would like you to know about recommended software tool, uh, listed as number five here. Although Raspbian comes preloaded with a wide variety of software, 
that's compatible with even more. So a selection of best of this software, if you want to see, you need to go under recommended software tool. Note that recommended software tool needs a connection to the internet. So if you want to get access, you need to have connection to internet, you need to be online. If your Raspberry Pi is connected, then just click on Raspberry Pi menu icon, move uh, over to preferences and click recommended software. The tool will load, then begin downloading information about available software. There is also an additional tool for installing or uninstalling software. It's called Add Remove Software Tool. This also can be found under the same preference category of the Raspbian menu. This one offers a wider selection of software. However, those varieties of software that you see there, they're not being checked by Raspberry Pi Foundation. So you may expect sometimes issue, but they don't receive support from Raspberry Pi Foundation. They're not vetted by uh, the foundation. Then next, we've got Raspberry Pi configuration tool. And this uh, tool is also very much similar to what you have seen with Welcome Wizard. Uh, you use at the start when you set up your software, it allows you to change various settings in Raspbian. Click on Raspberry icon and then move to preferences category and then click on Pi Raspberry Pi configuration to be able to load Pi configuration tool. And then you see that the tool is split into four tabs, each of which can control uh, a particular aspect of Raspbian. The first tab, which you see when the tool is first loaded, is called System. So remember, we are on the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, and the first tab is System. It's under System, you can change the password of your account if you wish. You can set a host name, the name of the Pi, the name that Pi in fact uses on your local wireless or wired network can be changed or any other settings a range of them can be changed there but in practice the majority of these you don't really need to change anything there the second tab is interface tab you find a range of settings on the interface all of which start off disabled because you need only to change these settings on the interface tab in case you're adding new hardware let's say you are adding raspberry pi camera module then you need to come here and change something here so only if instructed by the hardware manufacturer uh, for which you you wish to add new hardware to your pi you change uh, some settings here the exceptions to this rule, however, are SSH. For SSH, you need to change uh, stuff here. SSH enables a secure shell lets you log into your Raspberry Pi from a remote computer on the network using an SSH client. Another exception, VNC, Virtual Network Computer, enables you to control the Raspbian desktop from another computer sitting somewhere uh, remotely on your network using VNC client. Another exception is remote GPIO, uh, which lets you use the Pi's GPIO pins. For these exceptions, you also need to do some changes here on the interface tab. The third tab is performance tab. And here you can set the amount of memory used by your Pi's GPU or graphics processing unit. Or for some models, you're able to increase the performance of Raspberry Pi if you come here on the performance tab of 
Raspberry Pi configuration tool through a process known as overclocking. Again, as before, it's best idea to leave these settings alone as they are, unless you know what exactly you're doing, you're expert, and then you can start uh, playing around with the features here. For those of you who are not aware of what overclocking means, well, a circuit in a processor generates a regular sequence of electronic pulses and these pulses are used to synchronize operations of the processor's components. The time between pulses is the cycle time and the number of pulses per second is called clock rate or frequency. The execution times of instructions on a computer are usually measured by number of clock cycles rather than seconds. Clock rates for various models of the computer may increase as technology improves. And it is usually the relative times one is interested in when discussing the instruction set for a given CPU. Here for our discussion Raspberry Pi 4, at the heart of it, we have what we know as ARM architecture, ARM. And for this example, we can say ARM Cortex-A72 CPU or central processing unit is there running at a maximum clock speed of 1.5 GHz or 1,500 MHz. They're the same thing. The clock is the electronic pulse then used to synchronize all the components within a processor. And a maximum clock speed of 1.5 GHz means the processor updates one and a half billion times per second. But the point is, it can do even more than that. Why? Although 1.5 GHz is its maximum speed, Raspberry Pi typically idles at 600, let's say, MHz and switches to maximum speed only when needed. Overclocking now comes to play its role and is the process of setting a higher maximum speed for computer components. We can adjust the settings in a file called config.txt to overclock both CPU as well as GPU, graphics processing unit. So this is a bit of background of what overclocking means. Finally and fourthly, you have localization tab on the Raspberry Pi configuration tool. And that's the last category. You can change your local which controls things like language that are you using your Raspbian or how numbers are displayed. We can change it or we can check it here. Change the time zone here as well. Change the keyboard layout if needs be and set your country for Wi-Fi purposes. You may ask why or what does it have to do with Wi-Fi changing the country? Well, different countries, they have different rules. And those rules that govern frequencies uh, that a Wi-Fi radio can use, they are different from one country to another. Setting the Wi-Fi country in Raspberry Pi configuration tool to a different country from the one that you're actually in is problematic. It is likely to make, to make it struggle to connect to your networks and can even be illegal on the radio licensing laws and the seventh point of discussion here of our Raspbian operating system is shutting down so far you have seen you have explored the Raspbian desktop now it's time to see how safely you can shut your Pi down remember Pi like any other computers they keep files you're working on in volatile memory I've gone through that before and an example of that is RAM memory memory which is emptied when the system is switched off for documents you're creating 
it's enough if you save each in turn which takes the file from volatile memory to non-volatile memory like your micro sd card to ensure that you're not losing anything the documents you're working on are not the only files that are open remember raspbian operating system itself keeps a number of files open while it is running I'm pulling the power cable from the Raspberry Pi while these files are still open is the worst thing that can happen because this can result in the operating system becoming corrupt and needing to be reinstalled. Therefore, to prevent this from happening, you need to make sure that you tell Raspbian to save all its files and make itself ready for being powered off. This process as you know, it's called shutting down the operating system. But be careful, never ever pull the power cable from the Raspberry Pi before shutting it down first. If you do so, you're going to crop the operating system and could also lose any files that you have created or you have downloaded. To shut down, just click on Raspberry icon again from top left of the desktop. Then just click on shut down. A window will appear with three options shut down, reboot, and log out. And shut down is what you're after. When you click on it, it tells Raspbian to close all open software and files and then shut the Pi down. Once the display has gone black, just wait for a few seconds until the flashing green light on your Pi machine goes off then it's safe to turn off the power supply how to turn the pi back on just simply disconnect the, and reconnect the power cable or you can just toggle the power at the wall socket now it's time to see how pi can cooperate with python so Python within Pi, and I'm going to talk about one solution for this, that is Funny IDE. Let's first uh, recap Python, named after Monty Python comedy troupe. Goodyear Van Rossum's Python has grown from a hobby project from 1991 to much loved programming language today for a variety of projects. You have two native programming environments. You've got Scratch and you've got Python preloaded, pre-installed there. A Scratch provides a visual environment for you, whereas Python is a text-based environment for programming. You write instructions using a simplified language, pretty much similar to English language, with a specific format, which the computer then carries out those instructions. Python is defined as a great next step for those who have already used Scratch. It offers increased flexibility and a more traditional programming environment. That's not to say it's difficult to learn though, and if you practice, you become master in writing Python programs. And that can go from different projects like calculations, all the way to games programming, hacking, so different application for the program that you code. The good news is Python comes preloaded with Funny Python IDE. Tony has two versions, has two interface versions, normal mood and simple mood. And simple mood is better for beginners. The good news is that it's the default mood, so you don't need to do anything. It's already there as soon as you run Funny IDE. So we use simple mood here for illustration, which is loaded by default. As soon as you click on 
the Raspberry menu icon and then programming section and then you choose funny to be run and as you can see from illustration here four main parts of funny programming environments you've got toolbar shown by a at the top and that's Tani's simple mood interface that uses a bar of friendly icons as its menu it allows you to create to save to load or to run or to debug your python programs so we can test it in different ways then b shows the script area the script area is where your python programs are written and is split into two parts a main area for your program and a small side margin on the left that shows the line numbers for the code you enter then you've got python shell towards the bottom shown in c shell allows you to type individual instructions which are then run as soon as you press enter button so as soon as you press enter uh, it gets run and then it provides information about running programs you've got d variables area this place houses all the variables you have created in the course of your program they are displayed here along with their values for easy reference now that i have intro introduced different components of funny python ide let's see the first program uh, hello world the very famous example always when we start teaching program we go with hello world example whereby we ask the coder to code in a way that the program can show hello world message on the display remember python is very sensitive to a spelling and misspelling so syntax error if your program does not run but instead prints a syntax error this message comes to the shell area and it tells you that there is a mistake somewhere in what you have written so be careful about that python needs instructions to be written in a very specific way so it has a strict regime for uh spelling as i said python will check for instance for you to not miss a bracket or a quotation mark for our example here hello world to make sure that you spell print correctly for instance you don't use capital p because it's case sensitive or you don't add any extra symbols anywhere in your instructions if you do that then it won't run before I tell you where to put your code, remember you don't use Python interactive mode for normal programming. To see where Python interactive mode is, just take a look at the bottom side of the IDE here of Tani. You can see that when you put your code there in Python shell, when you press enter you see the program begins to run instantly python will respond in the same shell area if you put print hello hello world with correct spelling then you see the message hello world just as you ask there is because the shell at the end of the day is a direct line to python interpreter and its job is to look at your instruction and interpret what those instructions mean and that's why it is called interactive mode because it has interaction you can think of it like a face-to-face -face conversation with someone so you say something and then the person will respond and then wait for whatever you say next so you have interactive mode with direct line to shell but you don't use it we use the simple mode default place for putting your scripts and that is going to be on script area at left hand side of the tani so 
type your program print hello world with correct spelling and punctuations there and then when you press enter unlike the interactive mood nothing happens uh, you just go to a new line so a blank line appears in the script area so to make your code work you just click on the run button from the uh, toolbar and then Tony will run your code before running your code Tony will ask you to save your program first and to give it a name try to choose a descriptive name uh, in our example here we're going to have hello world for instance to name the code and then click save button once your program has saved then you see the output for your code the simple output here is two messages appear in the python shell area towards the bottom it tells you that funny has run hello world.py for python code and the output is in the next line hello world uh, as you can see highlighted in blue color in this slide thank you very much guys and it was just an introduction to python within raspberry pi machines